today we'll do a meditation on um, on developing the mind of definite emergence or practicing at developing the mind of definite emergence. Uh, so we'll do a little recap and and try to get to there uh, today. Okay. So to begin, we can just get a comfortable position. Sorry, I'm having technical problems. Alrighty. Okay, so begin by just coming and sitting comfortably on your chair or your cushion. Making sure that the back is straight, but not tense. The shoulders relaxed, the head relaxed, the face relaxed, bringing the awareness down to the neck, relaxing the neck. to the chest and the upper body. Relaxing the chest. And bringing the awareness to the stomach. The hips. The legs. Relaxing the legs. and the feet. Feel the sensation of support from the ground or the chair underneath you. And when you're ready, take a long breath in. And exhale. And again, another long, deep breath in. And exhale. Let go of any tension and just feel comfortable and at home in the body. And so to begin the session, we can develop positive motivation, thinking how amazing it is we're still here, still alive, still have our precious human rebirth. And we have so many conditions to support us to practice Dharma. And we're going to use this situation not just for ourselves, but for others, remembering that all sentient beings are just like us and wanting to be happy and not suffer. And so for them, thinking of them, we're going to do this meditation to develop our minds, our hearts, so that we can be of benefit in the world and of benefit to all sentient beings. It's our contribution to peace in the world. And it's part of our journey to enlightenment so that we can free all sentient beings from suffering. And so when we step out with this brave and positive intention, we're not alone. We're supported by the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. And so we can imagine 
merit field in front of us or our gurus and do the refuge prayer together three times, which is a request for them to honor their promises to help us. So with them in mind, we do this prayer three times. Sange chodam soki chognam la jancho pado dagni kepsuchi dagi jin sogi pe sonam ki jola penche sange ju parsho sange chodam soki chognam la jancho pado dagni kepsuchi dagi jin sogi pe sonam ki Jola penchia sange ju parsho sange shodan soki chognam la jancho bado dadni kepsuchi dagi jin sogi pe sonam ki jola penchia sange ju parsho and so with that we can do five minutes of breathing meditation, taking as the object, the sensation of the air coming in and out of the nostrils or the rising and falling of the belly, whichever is most comfortable. And we'll do this for five minutes.
And so with a mind that is more calm and stable and relaxed, We can begin by reflecting that we're in quite a good situation in samsara now. And if we practice the small scope, refuge and karma, we can be assured of a favorable samsaric situation again. But this alone isn't enough. Because if we look honestly at our lives, even with everything that we have, still there's been difficulty, pain, loss. We're still going to face the sufferings of birth and sickness, aging and death. And however much we try, we're bound to meet unpleasant circumstances, lose things or people that we love. we're certain to face difficulty again. And not only this, the texts say we've circled in samsara from beginningless time. going from high to low, rich to poor. Experiencing all kinds of difficulties and hardship. And we can remind ourselves that even happiness in samsara is untrustworthy. As Shantideva says, all experiences are like a dream. Whatever we experience, then it's gone. Pabonka says, nothing remains of a higher rebirths. We go from being like a god to a beggar. He says, even though you were born as Indra, you then became a beggar. Your rebirths as Indra were of no help to you. So try to reflect and see that as long as we're in samsara, even the happy experiences have no essence. They're not trustworthy.
we can think about happy experiences, but what remains with us of these experiences now? So try to see that there's no certainty of happiness in samsara. However good it gets, it finishes. And the bad isn't that enjoyable either. But this is the very nature of our existence as long as we have rebirth under the control of karma and afflictions. It's the nature of samsara. So our job then isn't really to complain about some sorrow for being as it is, or be surprised when it turns out as promised. And nor is our job to make samsara better. We've got what we've got to strive for is to get out. And we can reflect that just as everything around us has causes dependent arising, in the same way, suffering has causes it's dependent arising. And so in that way, it's not a fixed continuum that's certain to continue. It has causes. And when we take away those causes, it can cease.
So no cause, no result. And cessation, or true cessation, is what we get, or what results from the absence of suffering. So for a moment, try to imagine how it would feel, or what it would be like, to be without suffering and the causes of suffering. What would it be like in the mind and the body? Try to imagine it as if you're experiencing it. This is attainable. It's our birthright and something worth striving for. where we can think that it's not going to happen by itself. Geshe Patawa says, when you wandered so much in the past, samsara didn't stop by itself, nor will it stop by itself. You must stop it. And the time to stop it is now that you've gained the optimum human rebirth. So even if we haven't got the means to stop it yet, even if we haven't accomplished that yet, we can develop the determination that I'm going to use this life to engage in the practices that put a stop to suffering. And you can think I'm gonna do that, not just for me, 
I'm going to do that so that I can help others do the same. Because if we help even one sentient being stop the suffering of samsara, then the effort is worth it. So with whatever you have, try to cultivate a sense of determination and just abide with that. We can remember that we're doing it not just for ourselves, but for all sentient beings. And so we can dedicate all the positive energy that we've created for the enlightenment of all sentient beings so that none of the positive energy is wasted and lasts until each and every sentient being has attained the enlightened state. So we can you do the dedication prayers. Oops. One second. Okay. There we go. Okay, so we can dedicate together. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme dual bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. Long life prayer for Lama Zopa Rinpoche. You who uphold the subduer's moral way, who serve as the bountiful bearer of all, sustaining, preserving, and spreading Majanat's victorious doctrine, who masterfully accomplished magnificent prayers honoring the three jewels, savior of myself and others, your disciples, please, please live long. For His Holiness, the wish-granting, wish-fulfilling jewel, source of every single benefit and happiness in this world, to the incomparably kind Tenzin Gyatso, I beseech, may all your holy wishes be spontaneously fulfilled. For Osel, Venerable one, to you whose kindness exceeds that of all the conquerors for those wanderers in far off places, especially the West, mindful of your loving concern for us and intentionally descending again into a family of a far distant land, we make this request. O oh, Lama, please, li please live long. The Geshe Tutan Sherab. Beloved teacher, leading your students towards wisdom and compassion, explaining through exacting discernment the steps of the graduated path. You are the unequal guide. Please live a long and stable life. And you can add your own dedications as well. So thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Yeah. And wherever it's three degrees, keep warm. <laughs> 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 <laughs>